Cars are essential to the hustle and bustle of modern city life. But as the globe gets warmer and there are emissions more toxic, it's important to find alternatives. I've come to Shell Eco Marathon, where innovators and engineers are competing against each other to design, build and race energy efficient cars of the future. They're definitely not street cars, but what you're seeing here are prototypes of cleaner cars of the future. Whether powered by traditional diesel, gasoline, lower carbon, electric and hydrogen technologies, all of these futuristic cars are focused on just one thing, the greatest distance on just one litre of fuel or one kilowatt of electricity. Everyone's wheeling their cars to the track because as time rolls on, they're gearing up for their races, so I think people are getting a little bit stressed. Um, certainly nerves are running a bit high. The stakes are high. The winners of the competition not only get a six-month internship at Ferrari's racing division, but their work also attracts attention from all the major engineering companies. 1,500 engineering students from 28 different countries are taking part in the event near London. But not all are new to it. French team Microjoule have won in the internal combustion engine category eight times in a row. We have the world record is um, 3,700 kilometers per liter of gasoline. So how do you achieve that? What's been your secret it's for all these years? The weight of the car is um, around 34 kilo. You want to see a... Yeah. Yes, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Voilà. This is so light, yeah, honestly. This is a shell that is almost like a feather. So the entire shell is made of carbon fiber. Yes, yes. Yeah. You want to see the engine? Uh... Yes. You see the level of the fuel tank before the performance of yesterday. Here, yeah. in 40 minutes, we consume that. 40 minutes? Yes. How many kilometers? 16, I, I think. 16, 16, kilometers 16 kilometers in this amount of fuel? Yes. That's the sweetest fuel tank I've ever seen. And I love the fact that it's wrapped in foil. When the engine is uh, cold, you have to um, inject more fuel. The best efficiency of the engine is uh, around uh, 90 degrees. So the answer to that is to wrap it in foil like you would your roast chicken. Other teams are looking at greener, lower carbon technologies to fuel their vehicles. So now I'm gonna meet a team from UCL who have built their car to fit the hydrogen category. So a car that's powered by hydrogen gas. So like we chose that is because it's a sustainable and additive energy source. Yeah. The only waste we get from it is water. So we're quite keen to test it out. Can we see more inside it? Yeah. Or? It's, it's one big shell, but in two parts. The front part where the driver lays down, where you have the steering mechanisms. And then in the rear, that's where we have the whole powertrain fuel cell basically system, like where the magic sort of happens. This whole car here just weighs 45 kilos. Well, obviously this is why we use carbon fiber. So you actually sort of like shaped it so that the wheels could kind of be tucked in. Exactly, exactly. That makes it more aerodynamic. Does it? Definitely. Well, you just have to know, like, uh, just here also there's a cover just like that, and it definitely makes it much more dynamic. I mean, what kind of speeds are we talking about here? It's an endurance competition, so we're not looking to go fast like if it was F1. We're really trying to see how far we can go with the least energy. Yes. So we can go between 20 to 30 kilometers with this sort of vehicle, which I'd say would work fine if you're living in a city, basically. Are there any problems that you didn't realize you'd come across? I mean... <laughs> that looks like the face of someone that's had a lot of problems. I mean, I don't know where to start. <laughs> it looks like it's been exhausting. Oh, it's a battle. It's a battle. On the other side of the camp, a German team from Munich is taking a very different approach, focusing on minimising the overall weight of the car and a radically different engine mounting. We have developed these wheel hubs here. Ooh, 3D printed. This is not only 3D printed, it is also optimised heavily. Right, so, so tell me the functions. In here we have a motor, which is a fairly lightweight motor that is very high efficiency. Next to the motor we have a gearbox, which only takes up a very small amount of space, but allows us to drive a wheel much faster than we could without having a gearbox. And then we have a clutch here. So this allows us, if we are just rolling down the circuit, we don't have to have the motor spinning. 
we can take the motor out of the equation. Which means you don't have to pump fuel into it. Yes, we can just roll out. Okay, so your car is the urban concept battery powered. Yes, we just focus on how to get the most out of the electric power we have. I mean, the amount of work that's gone into this car and it's looking fantastic. Norman Koch is a general manager of the Shell Eco Marathon and a former competitor himself. Pure passion, which has fueled his 16 year involvement with the race. I was born at a time when my parents could choose basically between two cars, gasoline and diesel, and that was it for decades. Now we can already choose between hydrogen cars, electric cars, combustion cars, hybridized cars. And if I look forward another 10, 15 years, if anything, that choice will get bigger because each energy has advantages, each energy has disadvantages or is not so great in certain use cases. They may not be speeding around the track just yet, but these cars are models of the future. Time to test one out for myself. So I've just been asked if I want a prototype or an urban concept car and I get to choose. I want this one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. In front? Like yeah, that. you need to get your feet as far as you can. Okay. Not to 60 in 10 minutes. It's more of a gentle ride than a Formula One race, but the goal is efficiency, not speed. Uh, whoa. Woo! Gosh, the, the whole thing was just vibrating and the smell of gasoline and that was fun. For sure, this one, you can't go on the street with it. It's just like Formula One for racing. You push it to the boundaries of everything. It's not practical in the real world, but it's, it's helped the engineers to understand and to try to find new ways of, uh, of thinking. It's the moment of truth when we see all these concepts put to the test. The potential for more fuel efficient cars is massive because more and more options about powering cars are becoming available. Personally, it's energizing just being surrounded with all this enthusiasm for engineering. There's so much build up right now. Everyone is tense and eagerly awaiting the results of this competition. No one really knows what the results are. They've been gauging their performance over the last five days. But this is crunch time. This is where we find out who the true winners are. And it's another successful race for French team Microjoule, who win in the internal combustion engine category. Their futuristic design manages the furthest overall distance, reaching 2,735 kilometers on just one liter of fuel. But it's the greener technology car which takes home the ultimate crown, the world championship. The winners from the Netherlands, powered by hydrogen for the first time from the University of Twente, Green Team Twente! Whether traditional or low carbon fuels will power the car of the future remains to be seen. But one thing that's proving hopeful is we have a young generation of engineering minds working for a greener future. So much science and tech in that story. And if you want more of that, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.